Welcome to the T2 Hubcast. Join Martin, Dave, Spencer and guests as they discuss all things personal and professional development. The T2 Hubcast, brought to you by the People Performance People. So welcome back to the T2 Hubcast. It's me, Martin Johnson. And me, Spencer Locker. As always. As always. We're back. We're back. Three in a week. We haven't said that for a while, have we? <laughs> no. We're buzzing. Right. So we're good. what we're going to talk about today, Spence, what's today's podcast theme? I'm, I'm, I think it, we, we, we should address this thing called this locus of control. Yeah, let me just explain. Just for the listeners, let me just rephrase that. It's the locus of control. Did I not say it clearly? You did, but when you first say it fast, I thought you said locust. <laughs> the locust of control. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, yeah, which has a whole different meaning. Yes, but yeah. What, what we're saying is replace the word focus, replace the F with the L, and it's locus of control. Locus. It's, a, it's, a, it's a term that I had to really familiarise myself with when we started talking about it, Spence. Mm. It is... It is sort of uh, embedded in some uh, psychology studies and theories. Um, but do you want to just sort of try and um, layman's terms it for layman's terms? Just if, if nobody's heard of locus of control yeah. in terms of when we're looking at our personal productivity or our preferences yeah. and how we go through life, what is a locus of control? Right. So locus of control is it's a really simple concept. Um, which I find is a root concept to lots of other things. But basically, what we're doing is you're looking at a locus of control, internal or external. So when we start talking about internal locus of control, it's being, um, it's, it's basically looking at the experiences and the things that you do as being motivated internally. So, so you have a certain, you, everything that happens, everything you do, it's controlled by you. Yeah. So <clears throat> a locus of control, let's let's just is you know simplify this. It can be internal yeah. or external. Yes. Simply put, you will either focus internally or externally, yes. which means, you know, as an example, if you've got an internal locus of control, you will take responsibility for your own actions. Yeah. You'll be less influenced by the opinions of others because mm. you'll be quite strong in, in what you believe from the inside. Yeah. You know, you work hard to achieve things that you want and you, you sort of put the onus on it yourself. Yeah. You know, how hard you work drives the outcomes. Yeah. Yeah. Feel confident in your own individual ability to face challenges, etc. Yeah. Whereas when you start having an external locus of control, mm. you start to completely shift that and you live almost outside in. So yeah. you're more influenced by external factors than internal. Yes. So you're more likely to blame outside forces for, for circumstances, you're more likely to credit credit luck or chance for success rather than your own hard work. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, you sometimes feel hopeless and powerless in certain situations because you're blaming it on the situation, mm. not what you can do. Yeah. So in, in summary, you can really have two types of locus of control. You can be internal focused or external. Or both. Or both. Depending on what the context is. And, and I suppose to depend depending on how you are as a as a person. So if uh, uh, well, let's let's just so, so could it be situational, Spence? For example, so could you have? <clears throat> I mean, so instantly I resonate when when we talk about this. Mm. And I think you do as well. I resonate in the majority of uh, situations in life that I have an internal locus of control. Yes. <clears throat> and sometimes, and that's really, really my strength. You know, I have an unbelievable belief in personal power and what I'm capable of, and that, uh, you know, accountability is ultimately one of my core values. I yeah. have to be accountable for everything I do, and what I do will make a difference. So it serves me really well, but there's situations where it doesn't serve me well. However, there'll be other, a few situations where I might be more influenced externally. But in general, I, I, I resonate more with internal locus of mm -hmm. control. Would you say... You do as well, to a certain degree. Yes, I, I would um, tend to. I would tend to agree with you there. Um, it's, it's it's really interesting how when you were talking earlier on, and you said um, less influenced by external of what other people think, and more focused when, when we're talking about an internal locus of control. Yeah. However, that doesn't mean close-minded. Hmm. 
Yeah, I so, agree with that. Yeah, so I agree with that because that yeah. was my point. I yeah. am definitely internal locus of control. I believe in everything from the inside out that I can fundamentally impact and be responsible for most things in my life. Yeah. But I am open to the fact that I, I, I've got to allow myself in the right places to be influenced yes. from the outside in, mm. you know, and, and it's hard to decipher where and when that's appropriate. But I definitely think that <clears> that's <throat> my mix, whereas you will get some people listening to this mm. who by their own admission are more dominantly externally yeah. influenced mm. and they don't sometimes have enough internal influence. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Um, and again, we could already start start drawing parallels, and uh, you know, to motivate us and and all the other stuff that we do here at T two. But Certainly. but uh, yeah, this 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 term locus of control, it's more or less a challenging you to say. Do you think inside out, and do you have your inner strength, and you know, you believe that you control a lot of the things in your world, or do you live outside in where you believe? You don't control the majority of things in your world, and therefore you are constantly reacting to situations and environments. Yeah, I think <clears throat> it wasn't. It wasn't really until I started listening. Well, well, it, it goes back quite a while. But do you remember Dave was talking about the, and I think you've talked about it as well, where you've got the the um, the management mirror or the management window, the wi mirror window analogy. Yes. Yeah. So that has got quite a lot to do with it. It is. So the, so we use this in leadership, don't mm, we? Yes, yeah. So the mirror, the mirror window analogy was some leaders will look through the window when things go wrong to blame others. Yeah. And in the mirror when things, things go, go right, right and, they, and they want recognition. Yeah. Whereas other leaders will look in the mirror when thing go, things go wrong what yeah. could I have done differently? Yeah, yeah. What am I doing wrong as the leader? Yeah. But they'll look through the window when things go right and look to recognise others. Yes. And if you're listening to that mirror window analogy, just ask yourself this is the question in both your personal and professional life. Which one are you? Because that will give you an idea of your locus of control. Yeah. Do you look through the window when things go wrong and you want to blame everything and everybody, but you'll look in the mirror when things are good and you'll take the credit? Or are you quite comfortable in looking through the window and sharing the credit when things go right, but absolutely looking at yourself in the mirror when things go wrong? Certainly. And we've also drawn parallels with this in open versus closed loop thinking as well. Yeah. You know, and, and probably the majority of this, you know, when we do the talk, Spencer, yeah. we talk about resources versus resourcefulness. Yes. There are some people who will blame a lack of resources for a lack of their yeah. success. Mm. You know, the company's rubbish. Mm. The pay is rubbish. We don't have enough equipment. We don't yeah. have enough staff. So you'll look for every single thing that will stop you or is preventing you from being successful. Yeah. So that means your locus of control is an external one yeah. because Whereas, you're too externally focused. Yeah, and if you're internally focused, you realise that I need to achieve this, so I need to learn about this. Mm. I need to prepare myself. And so... Um, when when there is a when there is success, uh, when there is a, an achievement, you've achieved it yourself. You're not necessarily jumping up and down going, "That was me, 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 me." But when you fail it, you turn around and say, "You know what? I could have prepared better. I could have learned this. I could have done that." So you learn that lesson, yeah, rather than focus on failure. Yeah, and you know what? Whenever whatever we do at T two Spence, we're always trying to not box things into an exact science because human beings are incredibly complex, as we know. Social sciences and human behaviour is incredibly complex. Yeah. And therefore, it's not it's not fitting or relevant to always say this fits nicely in this box. So, so when people would ask the question, you know, what is better, an external locus of control or an internal locus of control? Well, actually, in, in, in extremes, neither mm. is can be overly productive. However, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna put it on record and say that when it comes to this. Yes, we're all different personality styles. We have different motivators and we, we're wired incredibly differently, which makes human collaboration fascinating. But here's what I think is 100% universally relevant. Mm. In general, if we go through life with the majority of situations that we face and the majority of you know our normal unconscious day going through every nanosecond of every day, if we have... A focus on an internal locus of control. So we take responsibility for our actions. Yeah, yeah. We are less influenced from the outside than we are from the inside. We absolutely own 
and, and are accountable for our own actions and success. You know, we feel confident that we can face challenges from the in- inside, but then we've got a healthy smattering of external locus of control where we allow ourselves to become influenced from the outside mm-hmm. where it's appropriate and where it's going to serve as well. Yeah. I think that's a universal blueprint for productivity because if you can't have it the other way around, imagine being majority majority external mm-hmm. focused um, where you're, you're believing that you can't control a lot and therefore you're, you're only as good as the circumstance you're in, the situations and the resources you have. Yeah. That ain't going to serve anybody well from a productivity perspective. Or, or a health perspective. Because straight away you said, I'm, they're not in control of their destiny. And what do we know about loss of control? Well, there's two things that trigger human stress. And one of them is being out of control, yeah, yeah. out of control of our environment. So if yeah. you've got an external locus of control, which is a dominant external locus, where yeah. you overly care about what people think of you, where you are hurt by mm-hmm. what people post on Facebook, where you can't take negative feedback, where you do feel overwhelmed when you don't have, a, when you have, a, don't have everything at your disposal then you are setting yourself up for, like you say, a very stressful situation or a, a mode of operation. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go into bat and I'm going to say we're all wonderfully different and there's no one size fits all, but I'm going to challenge people listening this, to this. If you resonate with more an external locus of control, i.e. your influence from the outside in, then you've got to wrestle some control back. Yeah. Because if you can start having a more internal locus of control, with a healthy smattering of knowing where it's right to be influenced or where it's going to serve you well to be influenced from the outside in, then that tends to make for quite robust, resilient human beings. Mm. And and I think that having that knowledge means that you can make changes. I mean, we talk about the, the influencers, nature versus nurture. We talk about influencers during our formative years. But there's been studies done about this locus of control where when children are raised um, and encouraged to be independent, then they, they basically learn the connection between actions and consequences. And they learn, uh, they, they tend to be more well-developed and uh, with an in, a better developed internal locus of control. They get better paid jobs. Mm-hmm. They get um, the more achievement orientated. Well, there's a, there's a, and again, they, they travel the world more. They, they, you know, there's a lot of... Um a lot to be said for uh, internal strength and independence. And that doesn't come by not experiencing it and, and being allowed to express it in your formative years. Um, You're a strong and self-reliant guy. Yeah, and I think what I will say about my parents is, and, and you know, everybody's parents different, um, and, and, and I guess there is no right and wrong, and, it, and it's probably the hardest job on the planet, and we're all, believe me, as a father of three, I'm learning every single day, yeah. and I don't get it right all the time. You know, nobody does. But um, when I think back to one of the things that my parents have probably instilled in me is, is independence. You know, we were allowed to experiment, to be free, to do things on our own, um, you know, to, to, to be independent. We weren't modicoddled. You know, we weren't. Mm. And and um, and I think that's sort of contributed to me having that level of independence as an adult. Yeah. So I think um, I think it's a really important thing. And when when we started debating this recently, Spence, about locus of control, I had to look up the word locus because I, I said, "Do you mean focus?" And you was like, "No, locus." But it ties into if anybody wants a book tip, and I, and I said it to you before this, mm. it ties into Michael Neal's book, The Inside Out Revolution. And Michael Neal is a great author, and he wrote a book called The Inside Out Revolution, which says some people live from the inside out and some people live from the outside in. And it was this exact theory around looks of control and where we're stimulated from. So there's a bit of inter, you know, in, uh, introvert, extrovert in there. But it was also around the people who have a more internal looks of control tend to have more resilience, more sustainable, you know, not more willpower, more staying power. Yeah. And they tend to take ownership and responsibility for situations rather than becoming the victim of them. Yeah, right. Yeah, and we all sense. need that right now in life, Spence. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. It's too easy to blame politics and Brexit. I, you know that I, I, I had a conversation with a couple of uh, 
cohorts recently in training mm. and the brexit questions coming up from businesses all the time mm. what does this mean what if this won't allow us to do this the Bre if brexit goes through with a no deal it means we can't and they're constantly talking mm. in that outside in fashion and i'm yeah. challenging that you know mm. no matter what the environment it will be what it will be and you have to learn to adapt yeah you have to focus on what you control and how you adapt and thrive in that type of environment yes it might be a different environment to the one we have today yeah but if you blame brexit for the yeah. reason why your business can't flourish believe me it won't flourish mm. you know and some yeah, businesses yeah. are impacted more than others but this is what we mean by internal external local control yeah yeah it all fits together doesn't it, it does yeah like engine bracket Services industries are interesting. So, you know, businesses are one thing, but service industries are, I think, need to be aware of this as well at an individual level. And I'm talking fire services, ambulance services, <coughs> police forces, yeah. military, etc. because the environments they operate within um, and the challenges they face both financially, from a resourcing and staffing perspective in the modern day, the capacity uh, perspective, they absolutely can start to get dragged into an external locus of control. And what I mean by that, Spence, is, you know, our, our hardworking folk of the NHS, for example, are working round the clock, oversubscribed. You know, it's a thankless task. Mm. And they don't have all of the resources that they need to do the job properly in an ideal world. And these are great people who have traditionally set off with an internal locus of control. You don't become a surgeon without taking respons responsibility for your actions yeah. and feeling confidence from the inside out and wanting to face challenges as an individual. You don't become a surgeon or a, a whatever you are in the NHS, you know, without starting off there. Mm. But the more the environment drags you down, the more you can start having more of an external locus of control, which means you're going to be more blameful of the outside in yeah. as a reason as to why you can't do your job. Yeah, yeah. And it's a difficult one, but we've got to start sort of wrestle back that control. Which is easier said than done, but it can be done. It can be done. Uh, yeah, when we start talking about uh, mental health and we start talking about resilience... Resilience is all about taking responsibility. Taking, well, you uh, being honest and well, I've got to admit, you always you always start your resilience sessions and talks off, and you always talk about accountability and responsibility. Yeah, and sometimes I've got to admit, and and um, it's ace, it's ace this job because we all learn from each other, yeah. and there's constant new insights and trends and research coming in, but. When you first started talking about it, I used to think, Spence, we're not talking about accountability. We're talking about resilience in my mind. Mm. But the, 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 nat the natural evolution of what we're talking about here is it, that's where it starts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, very much so. And yeah. I get it now. I get oh, it because I... it's like if, <clears throat> if you can't be – if you're not accountable in the first place, yeah. then you're not, you're not going to have that, that resilience and that – um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're not going to have that ownership where you start doing all you can to drive the outcome because yeah. guess what? No one's going to come and do it for you. Yeah, yeah that's your point, isn't it? The, 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 yeah, the point. The point is you've got to be accountable because if you don't take responsibility or accountability for mistakes, then it's not your lesson to learn. If you say one me, one me, then you basically sort of di divulge yourself of all responsibility. Uh, or di is it divulge? Have I used the wrong word there? Um, all right, so I think you, no. I think you're right. You, you, you basically absolve, you absolve yourself of all responsibility. So if you do that, you don't learn from the failure. Yeah, because it's not your your lesson to learn. So when you're honest and you put your hand up, say, you know what, that was me. I did it wrong. Then if you've got, as if you're working with somebody, if you're working for somebody who's got anything about, and they'll turn around and say, right, thanks for that, but that's not the focus. The focus is absolutely right. But you learn from that mistake. And when you do that, and when it, and it's got to be appropriate, it can't be for everything. But when you do that, when you sort of turn around and say, "Well, actually, that was me," people will trust you. Absolutely. And you know what? We we, we talk societally, Spence, about the world we live in now with twenty four hour sensationalist media and fake news and social media, and the fact that it's been well documented recently 
um, around how Facebook operates and the, the clever algorithms that pick up your <clears throat> your political, religio- religious and, and social preferences yeah. and drip feed news, whether it's fake or not, mm. that, that, that supports your narrative. So it almost from the outside in, you, your beliefs uh, are becoming even more ingrained, reinforced, reinforced yeah. which then, and people wonder why this country is polarised at the minute in terms yeah. of a lot of stuff. And, um, you know, it's a great saying, but I, I think we have, but from the world we live in societally, we live in a world where we can be influenced from the outside in more than ever. Yeah. It's always been there, but more than ever. Yeah. And you think about 24-7 digital documentaries on Netflix, on-demand podcasts, whatever it might be. Yeah. We are constantly influenced from the outside in. Mm. And I think I think that, the, the, you know, we've tipped the balance slightly where because we've been out, influenced from the outside in so much, we're losing a little bit of that internal locus of control. Yeah. And... You know, it's 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 a very hard thing to do, but I love the saying. You know, a strength of a person is doesn't. It's not about them um, influencing others. A strength of a person in the modern days is how they're not influenced. Their ability to not be overly influenced by yeah. everything they read, consume, and hear. And, you you know, I know it's one of your biggest bugbears at the moment, Spence, but mm. social media, yeah. the amount of people who are being influenced from the outside in on a daily basis, which is reinforcing their limitations, why they can't be successful. Yeah. We've only seen it with the election at the minute. You know, if mm. the Tories get in, this is a disaster for our country. If Labour get in, the world's over. Uh, you know, Brexit on top of that, mm. you know, we've got, we're still dealing with global ter- terrorist situations, yes. you know, and we are bombarded. And what starts to happen, and you can see it in people's language spends, they start to develop an external locus of control. Yeah. So they start blaming the forces outside of their control mm. as a reason as to why they're not going to be happy, fulfilled, or successful. Yeah. Black Friday. Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and they don't believe they can change the situation through their efforts, so I might as well give up now and just have a good old moan in the world. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Oh, very much so, yeah. When we start talking about the uh, um, closed versus open loop thinking, closed loop thinking, I told you this was going to happen. I told you this was going to happen. I told you it's them. It's them, you see, it's them. But it's the same in companies as well. When when staff become so demoralised and and disenfranchised from the organisation, so every job is the organisation's fault. Yeah. You know, they haven't put... they haven't put enough mileage in. They've told us to get to the site on the wrong time. You know, they haven't p- provided the equipment. We don't have this. This system doesn't work properly. And yes, there are challenges. Granted, in every organisation, there are always going to be challenges to people, process, and systems, without yeah. a shadow of a doubt. But if you <clears throat> get yourself in that external locus of control mindset where you are constantly being affected by what's happening around you and you therefore are taking no ownership over making the difference or navigating that situation you're always going to be a victim of your circumstance and you're never going to be the master of your own destiny no and um you probably you probably find that these people who have got an external uh locus of control are probably negative on the ground influencers and the people who have an internal locus of control I didn't say locus then, didn't yeah, I? Yeah, you did. I did. It's a fine line. It's if you bang, it, you, bang on a, you, bang a, you bang a T on the end <laughs> and it has a different meaning. But yeah, internal. Can you imagine the locust of control? <laughs> this big locust <laughs> going around cities, just it, controlling yeah. people. It's a plague of locusts just come together as one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so an internal locus of control um, is a sort of positive on the ground influencer. Yeah. Because they're controlling it, whereas... They're, they're sort of proactive rather than reactive. And here's the last stat we've got on this to, to, to for anybody who likes Your last stat, I've got some. Oh, you've got some stats. Yeah. Here's a stat I'd like to sort of, and it, you might be about to reinforce it, but here's a yeah. stat on this. People who are surveyed, who have taken the test, and we've got a test on our hub, so if you want to take the test on, on our T2 hub, you go to the pathway, uh, which is understanding your locus of control. Mm. You'll be able to click on a button and take the test, and it will give you... Uh, you, you know, your locus of control, whether you're internal or external. But here's what it says. People surveyed who have an internal locus of control, who take responsibility, who are less influenced by the outside, who work hard to achieve the things they want, who feel confident in facing challenges, they report being happier and more independent. 
Whereas an external locus of control, these people do report to being more prone to experiencing learned helplessness, levels of anxiety and stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. So well-being is massive on well-being. Yeah, yeah. And you know what's, for me, what's the beauty about this, Spence? We can control this. With a little bit of practice, it, it, you know, if you've yeah. formed a habit of being, you know, influenced from the outside and it's going to take some time, it's not an overnight fix. No, no. But the more you think about this and the more you wrestle back some control and when you believe, when you start to be influenced from the outside and you take that moment and intervene, you will soon form a different habit of starting to, you know, live from the inside out and yeah. having a bit more of an internal locus of control. Yeah. I've got a study here, 7,500. 7,500 British adults followed since birth, those who had shown an internal locus of control at the age of 10, were less likely to be overweight at age 30, less likely to describe their health as poor or show high levels of psychological stress. The, majority, the major explanation of these findings was that children with more internal locus of control behave more healthily as adults because they have a great confidence in their ability to influence outcomes through their own actions. They also have higher self-esteem. And self-esteem is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's not arrogance. No, you know, no, it's no, not. So. Self-esteem is not arrogance, which, you know, people people who have an external locus of control will label internal locus of control yeah. as arrogant. It's not. Yeah. It's just an, a, a belief in personal power and, and independence. Um, but self-esteem is so important on well-being. Mm. You know, and, and quite often you'll always find people with, uh, you know, anxiety, ongoing stress issues, potential depression, etc., will have incredibly low self-esteem. Mm. We know that part of this is caused by lack of chemicals in the brain like serotonin and oxytocin and dopamine, etc., um, lack of endorphins pr production in the body. But um, So there's a bit of science around it as well. But low self-esteem is, is a contributing factor to, to negative well-being. Mm. Um, and therefore, developing this internal locus of control and being mindful of it, of when you're constantly being dragged in directions and into emotional states based on what you're reading, observing, what people are saying, and you know the way your mind's working around that, you can try and intervene. You can, you can, you can wrestle back some control. Yeah. We all do it. Mm -hmm. You know, every human, even if you're internal locus of control will experience periods where something is said or done or happens around them which affects their behavior their yeah. decisions and their mindset it Certainly. does yeah it's hum human it's human nature is yeah. life but it's those people who are habitually falling foul of yeah. that that tend to struggle yeah and it's very important to when, when we're talking about this it's not a case of think positively it's not a case of if you have a positive mindset you'll be you'll be doing all right it's a case of what can I control? Yeah. That thing might be a little tiny little part of a big thing, but you still control that little thing. And if you can focus on that and work with that, that can get bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's not a case of just being ignorant and and, and blissful and, and all this and the other. It's not just a positive mindset. It's a case of, right, out of this huge thing, this, this, this big thing that's really dragging me down or bothering me, what can I control? You've hit on something here, and I'm, I've got a couple of minutes left, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna just mention this that links into mm. your point there, Spence. Um, a few a few uh, months back, I delivered a speaking engagement at an event, and as I always do at these events, I always leave ten to fifteen minutes at the end for Q and A. Yeah, and uh, there was a few real practical questions coming from the audience, and then and then one guy put his hand up and uh, he asked me a question. He says, "Martin, I've listened to you intently, and there's loads of stuff in there which is great. However, can I just ask?" Are you saying that the key to um, fulfillment and success is thinking positively? And I said, no, it's absolutely not. The key to fulfillment and success is thinking productively. Because mm. there is a huge difference between thinking positively and thinking productively. Yeah. And thinking positively with the best will in the world, it helps. I like it. It's positive, right? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like it. But if you still aren't going to take some productive action and make some decisions as a result, then all the positive thinking in the world sat there doing nothing is not going to change the situation. Yeah. So I said, it's not about thinking positively. It helps. It's, it's a start. Yeah. But it's about thinking productively. And that's why you got to bring it back to the present, what you control and what you can do and make some bloody decisions and take action. That's what's going to you know, get you out of the situation. Yeah. 
So, you know, I think there's something in it. We've written a pathway with 30 seconds left. We've written a pathway on the hub. Uh, it's called Understanding Your Locus of Control. We'll post this hubcast as well, Spence. Nothing to do with insects? No, absolutely not. Big, crazy insects <laughs> who are trying to wrestle back some control. It's uh, absolutely about a mindset and about the way you are influenced from the inside out or from the outside in. Cool. Our recommendation is that every human being should be influenced from the inside out the majority of the time with a healthy smattering of outside in where it's going to serve you well. Spencer Locker, amazing podcast. Thank Cheers, you very much. Mine. And we'll see you again. See you in a bit.